How did the Mona Lisa become the world's most famous painting? Some have wondered. The Mona Lisa painting is regarded as one of the greatest artworks in human history, but not just for the reasons you might think. In fact, for centuries the painting was adored by mostly the art world, but not nearly revered as it has been since the early 20th century, when a shocking turn of events captivated the world and has had experts, scholars and historians trying to solve the allure of the Mona Lisa ever since. Five centuries after Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa, the portrait hangs behind bulletproof glass in the Louvre Museum and draws thousands of visitors every single day. For over a century, experts have spent countless hours examining many theories to pinpoint one reason for the painting's allure. It is the most famous painting in the world, with the highest insurance valuation for a painting at $100 million in 1962, which is estimated to be much more today. And yet, when viewers manage to see the artwork, they are sometimes baffled by the small subdued portrait of an ordinary woman. Much has been said about her smile and gaze, but some viewers still might wonder what all the fuss is about. In fact, for centuries the painting was admired as it hung on the Louvre Museum wall next to other masterpieces where you could stand up close and examine the details of Mona Lisa's smile in the cracking paint. But now at its heightened level of celebrity, the Mona Lisa hangs alone on the museum wall where you cannot get within 15 feet of the painting. The frenzy began in 1911 when a shocking turn of events captivated the world and raised the Mona Lisa from admired art to the world's most famous painting, a scandal engulfing Pablo Picasso, French poet Apollinaire and American tycoon J.P. Morgan. Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece was a 16-year endeavor that showcases his smoky sfumato style. Da Vinci described his technique without lines or borders, in the manner of smoke or beyond the picture plane. The subject's photographic quality, with a softly sculptural face, displays Leonardo's skillful technique of sfumato. His understanding of the skull beneath the skin may be attributed to the fact that he dissected animals and around 30 corpses. The delicately painted veil, the detailed curls of the hair and the careful rendering of folded fabric reveal Leonardo's studied observations with tremendous patience. And although the sitter's steady gaze and restrained smile were not regarded as mysterious until the 19th century, viewers today greatly appreciate her enigmatic expression. Da Vinci painted a complex figure that is very much like a complicated human, a portrait that dares to stare back and captivate whoever looks her way. The identity of the portrait's sitter soon became more intriguing. Although many scholars believe that the painting depicts Lisa Gerardini, wife of the Florentine merchant Francesco del Giocondo, no records of such a commission from Francesco exist, and the sitter has never been conclusively identified. The unknown identity has thus lent the figure to whatever characterization people wanted to make of her. The myth of Leonardo as a genius has continued well into the 21st century, contributing to the Mona Lisa's popularity. Historians discovered da Vinci applied very thin, nearly transparent layers of oil paint with his fingers over many months to slowly build up the glowing, softly focused image of Mona Lisa. In fact, he would apply 20 to as many as 40 layers of paint. This technique allowed him to not only realistically duplicate the translucency of skin, but also to create such a lifelike presence that the subject appeared to actually be in the room. Leonardo became more popularly seen not only as a very good painter, but also as a great scientist and inventor whose designs prefigured contemporary inventions. Da Vinci attributed a great deal of importance to light in his works, writing, Look at light and admire its beauty. Close your eyes and then look again. What you saw is no longer there, and what you will see later has not yet come to be. The Mona Lisa was painted beginning in 1503, while Da Vinci was living in Florence, until at the invitation of King Francis I, Leonardo da Vinci left Italy and settled at the Chateau du Clos Lucet in the fall of 1516. At the age of 64, he crossed the Alps and brought with him three of his masterpieces, the Mona Lisa, the Saint Anne, and the Saint John the Baptist, as well as his notebooks and manuscripts. After da Vinci's death, the Mona Lisa spent time in the Palace of Versailles and Napoleon's bedroom. After the French Revolution, they became the property of the Republic, ending up in the Renaissance Museum Louvre in Paris, France. On August 21, 1911, a handyman working at the Louvre named Vincenzo Perugia 
along with two accomplices, hid in a broom closet, and after the museum closed, removed the painting from the wall, wrapped it in a cloth, and walked out the next morning. The painting was not discovered missing until the next day. The museum's paintings were often removed from the walls for cleaning or photography, so passers-by took little notice of the blank space where the portrait was usually located. Finally, at around noon on Tuesday, a visiting artist asked a security guard to track the painting down. When the guard couldn't locate it, the museum called the police and began a frantic search. That same evening, a museum official announced the theft to the world. The Mona Lisa is gone, he said. Thus far, we haven't a clue as to who might have committed this crime. The museum closed for a week to ascertain the whereabouts of the piece. The police were lost as to who could have done it, while the international press went crazy for the story, floating many theories as to who done it. Soon, some artists were dragged in for questioning by investigators. First French poet, Guillaume Apollinaire, was arrested under suspicion. Apollinaire spent a week in police custody as they connected him with some stolen Egyptian statuettes from the Louvre. Unable to pin the theft on Apollinaire, he accused his friend artist Pablo Picasso. Picasso had previously bought stolen art off a friend. At that time, living at large with an artistic circle in Paris, Picasso was worried he'd be deported to Spain and denied knowing Apollinaire. Both were later exonerated from the case. In France at that time, there was a great deal of concern that American millionaires were buying up the legacy of France, the best paintings. At one point, American tycoon and art lover J.P. Morgan was suspected of commissioning the theft. Morgan was mobbed at a Florence train station by Italians who believed he had the painting. In the U.S., even the Secret Service was rumored to be on the case. After a week-long shutdown, the Louvre reopened to mobs of people, all rushing to see the empty spot that had become a mark of shame for Parisians. Perugia hoped to sell the painting, but the heist had received so much attention that the Mona Lisa became too hot. Twenty-eight months after he snatched it from the Louvre, Perugia finally made a pass at selling the Mona Lisa to an art dealer in Florence. But the dealer was suspicious. He had the head of an Italian art gallery come take a look at the painting. A stamp on the back confirmed its authenticity. They said, OK, leave it with us and we'll see that you get a reward. Perugia went back home. But half an hour later, to his surprise, the police were at his door. He said later that he was trying to return it to Italy, that he was a patriot and it was stolen by Napoleon, and he was trying to return it to the land of his birth. But the patriotic defense won him legions of admirers. Even after the prosecution presented evidence that he planned to shop the painting around to art dealers and sell it for profit, many Italians still considered him a national hero. In the end, he was sentenced to one year and 15 days in prison, but served just seven months before winning his release on appeal. He later fought in the Italian army during World War IV returning to France, where he died in 1925. The daring heist only made the Mona Lisa more famous. At least 120,000 people went to see the painting in the first two days after it was returned to the Louvre. Art lovers and critics launched into speculation about its subject's mysterious smile and continuous gaze. She returned as public property the first mass art icon. Today, the world's most recognizable painting remains in the Louvre, where it hangs in a climate-controlled box protected by bulletproof glass. The Mona Lisa receives some 8 million visitors each year.